Nick Ferrari at Breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Nine minutes for eight is the time. Back to our conversation. There are one point, almost 1.2 million jobs out there. Why aren't people going and getting them? They need to do that, the importance of work. But let's pause on that and pick up on another conversation, which when I went through the front pages for you, says there is a Christmas shortage on the way. Industry bosses are warning and put that to Conservative MP and chair of the Conservative Party, Oliver Dowden, who joins me now. It's good to have you on. Thank you. Um, I heard from the Prime Minister last week and other senior members of the government that Christmas will be better than last year's. Yet I look at the paper, there are now Christmas shortages, government being warned, there will be gaps on the shelves. What is the reality, Mr Dowden? Good morning. Well, good morning, Nick. And uh, I completely understand how your listeners will be looking at those headlines and feeling concerned about them. First, to say that uh, officials at Felix Doe have said, which is uh, welcome news, that the situation is improving. But there are challenges with the, the supply chain. And I want to, to reassure you and reassure your listeners that the government appreciates people's concerns and is working to address them. It's our job to, to get on with the job and address it. That is why, for what example... What does that mean in practical to... terms? Because you'll, you'll be aware nearly 40% of containers come through Felix Stowe, and I read that ships are being turned away currently. So mm-hmm. what is being done to make sure they're not turned away, Mr Dowden? Well, the the big challenge uh, we have that, that you'll be familiar with is the, the lack of HGV drivers. That's not just unique to the UK, across Europe, Poland, US and even China has this challenge. That's why we are investing in recruiting more HGV drivers, 5,000 uh, more uh, trainers. Uh, we're also um, investing in reskilling them, so £17 million pounds to, to reskill with these so called skilled boot camps, and that's why we're having more um, visas as well. So we're working through a range of measures to increase the supply of HGV drivers the number of HGV drivers available, I think that's that's the single best thing we, we can do to address this. How many overseas drivers have we been able to attract to date? Uh, well, the, the number so far is uh, relatively limited. I think we've had about 300 applications, but that, those numbers are slightly out of date, and I'm sure the Tran- Department for Transport will update it. We well, that's not going to solve we're... the crisis, is it? N- no, it's not, and that's why it's just one of a range of, of measures that so... we're taking, because... Of course, we have to. We can't just do what we've always done, which is when we have a shortage, just get more um, foreign labour in. We we need to improve the skills in this country, and we need to get more people training to be HGV okay. drivers. That's why we're streamlining the recruitment process. Ah, that's why good, we're creating ah, more opportunities. Good. So that streamlines. So three hundred odd applications. How many approved? Uh, well, the the published figures. Uh, so far, I think, was just over 20. So clearly that, that number is going to increase. I'm so sorry. I thought you said Christmas. that was a... I must have misheard you. I thought you said it was been streamlined. I don't see 20 out of 300 so, as sorry, streamlined, the, Chairman. Um, there's, there's, there's two different elements to it. So there is the the application for the, the right. visas, but the, there is the streamlining of the testing that happens for HGV drivers in this country because we over the longer term, we need to get more people driving HGVs uh, that's that's why we are streamlining that process, why we're investing more. In fact, we've got military um, testers also helping us with this. The the best way to solve this is getting people in this country to train as HGV Yeah, but we're not going to do that overnight. So if I've got my sums right, that's roughly a 7% success rate of streamlining applications. Are you happy with that? So, sorry, the, the, there are... Three, there are 300 it's very, it's people very... apply, 20 have been processed, right? That's roughly 7 8%. That's a good level, is it? Uh, I uh, I think, and forgive me, I think we're we're comparing apples with pears here. So there is, on the one hand, there is people in this country who are being HGV drivers. No, I meant overseas drivers. HGV. Overseas so the drivers. overseas drivers, I think that number is just a reflection of the, the number of applicants that have been processed and have actually got their visa coming here. That is a So we have 300 the, on the, the road. Train. I see. OK. No, we, ha- we have 300 people that have... Um, have have applied for these visas. I believe the number is just over 20 that have actually received them, so are on the road. But I expect that so number it, to increase over time. So it is that 7%. is different. You, well, the 7% of, of those... Mr. Delton. 7%? <laughs> That's hopeless. Though I'm sure... I'm quite sure that that number is going to right. increase over time. So but that got, is separate to people in this country okay. who are retraining. So we've got this crisis as regards shipping. We've got the energy crisis. And we've got the issues with the drivers. And we've got the Prime Minister in Spain. Is he working from his holiday in Marbella? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so I've, I've worked for um, three prime ministers. This, this is my third, and I can assure you there's no such thing as a, a holiday as prime minister. He'll be working out there, and I know ah. that he's very much engaged with the issues of the day. Let me take you back to the delights of Manchester last week. Can you remember the senior politician who said the following? People need to get off their pelotons and back to their desks. Uh, well, I, I'm glad you were listening to uh, to to, to what you. I was saying. That would be you, I think Mr. that that, uh, that is a sl- and, I don't think that's I a direct look, quote, but the essence of it is. And, is and I look at my papers, and Mr. Johnson is not at all on his desk, or he's at home painting, not on his peloton. He's in his luxury villa, so he's not heeded your advice. Why should the country? Uh, well, the the prime minister has been at his desk throughout this entire crisis. I've I've seen the prime minister at his desk uh, pretty much. Every, every day since he became PM, he's uh, got another baby on the way. He's uh, he had COVID. He's had all sorts of changes, and sadly, he's lost his mother. Indeed, um, he is working from uh, from his uh, holiday home. But so he doesn't he will have be back to be behind shortly. his desk all the time, but we do. Because you know, I never leave this studio, except to come to Manchester. I never leave this yeah, studio, yes. Mr. Dalton. I'm trying to well, uh, the example. Um, the the Prime Minister has been at his desk all the way through this. I'm actually, by the way, I'm not saying to people, and the reason why I said those comments is because I lost count of the number of small businesses in my constituency and up and down the country who were saying to me, look, how can I get people into the office? Full stop, not just, you know... For, for a day, but just, just to come in at all if the government doesn't lead by example. I think the government needs to lead by example. That is, by the way, not to say two things. First of all, we have outstanding civil servants and I want to pay tribute to them. But also, we're not saying you have to be chained to your desk nine to five, but I think it is important for people's mental health, for creativity and so on, for people to spend at least some of their time in the office. And that was the plea that I was making in those comments. Last couple of uh, issues to explore with you, Mr Dowden. Um, one of your colleagues, Stephen Barclay, was asked 20 times on various broadcast networks, eight by me, whether he wanted to apologise for the report in the, by the two committees of MPs. He was unable to say sorry to my listeners for some of the mistakes that were made. Can you apologise? Yes, and I've I've listened to the, the 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 testimony of people who've lost their 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 loved ones. I've heard it as a constituency MP and as a minister, and each one of those is a, a tragedy for the the families involved. And of course, we are we are very sorry for for, for people's losses, and that's what the, the prime minister has has said as well. This this disease has been absolutely heartbreaking. And by the way, I think it was a very good and sensible report from from Jeremy Hunt and Greg Clark. And of course, the government will go through all of the recommendations and and respond fully to them. Lastly, the Northern Ireland Protocol, it seems, how many times have I said this, a key key day today as the issues are explored. It would appear that Lord Frost has made some progress with the EU and indeed the EU seems to be meeting on more equitable terms with the UK. Can you briefly summarise the situation as you see it, Mr Dunn? Yes, well, well, we'll look at the full response when it comes out from the EU later today and we will engage constructively with them. It is clear, though, that we do have to have some fundamental changes to the Northern Ireland Protocol because it is not working uh, particularly for the majority community in Northern Ireland. And we do have to address issues such as the competence of the CGEU, the, the European Court of uh, Justice. Uh, we hope very much the EU will engage positively with us, and we welcome w- what apparently is 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 being said so far. But we need we need to engage properly on this. Grateful for your time. Thank you, Chair of the Conservative Party, Oliver Dowden, appearing here on LBC. Where the time is eight o'clock. News is next. On your radio, on Global Player, and play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, a cabinet minister has tried to reassure people about shortages